Hello everyone, my name is Larissa Mocanu. I'm a PhD student from the University of Cassino in Southern Lazio in Italy. And today in this presentation, I'm going to share with you my first work realized together with Costanzo Bellini, Vittorio Di Cocco and my supervisor, Professor Francesco Iagoviello. And uh, in collaboration with Filippo Berto and Joana Razzavi from the Norwegian University NTNU. This work is uh, a review of uh, additive manufacturing processes for metals and the effects of defects on mechanical strength. The goal of this work is to provide a full overview of the main defects in additive manufactured components in order to understand which parameters can be modified during the printing process to improve the mechanical behavior. This presentation is uh, subdivided as shown on the right side, so I'm going to start with a brief introduction on AM technology, and then I'm going to focus on the main topic, that is the defects. Additive manufacturing is a new technology that quickly received worldwide attention because it has great strength. According to ASTM, the AM processes for metals are only two powder bed fusion category and uh, directed energy deposition category. Both have important benefits, but there are also some limits. In particular, there are different defects that need to be controlled during the printing phase. The main defects in AM parts are pores, lack of fusion defects, residual stresses, thermal microcracks, and roughness surface. The main question is why these defects appear? There are several reasons. First of all, there is a physical phenomenon called Keel mode, and in this case, the process parameters that need to be considered are laser power and scan speed. During melting with high intensity heat source and lower speed, the melt pool is very penetrative, as is shown here in the second figure. This is due to the transition from conduction mode, here visible in the first picture, to keel mode, here visible in the second picture. And in these conditions, the localized temperature is very high and the evaporation starts. The vapor absorbs more heat and consequently more vapor forms until a hole containing vapor is formed. And some authors found that keel porosity is visible with higher power levels, in this case 195 watt, and uh, lower speeds, in this case 500 mm per second. So these parameters should be, should be avoided. The same authors also found that increasing the scan speed to over 1000 mm per second the keel mode becomes less important because the moderate energy density provides a consistent melt pool shape, as is shown here in the third figure. Another reason for the formation of defects in AM components is bowling phenomenon, and likewise the keel mode, this is due to the, the variation of laser power and scan speed. As is shown here in the first figure, during the passage of the laser power over the powder bed, the metal powder is locally melted on a straight path. But when the two parameters are not optimized, the fused line begins to be broken up because of the lesser surface tension, as is shown here in the figure C, D and E. More in detail, the boiling phenomenon happens when the energy density is not strong enough. And uh, following this equation, in other words, bowling phenomenon happens when laser power is low and when scan speed is high. Here in the first group of figure is shown a study where with a set of parameters consisting of the same laser power of 50 watt and with increasing scan speed, there are visible irregular shape pores and unmelted particles. In particular, it is possible to see that with a scan speed of 1200 mm per second, the bowling phenomenon is more marked because the unmelted regions are larger. But with different sets of parameters and in this second figure, such as 
195 watt laser power and uh, 1200 mm per second scan speed, the final components appear near fully dense. It is important to see also that for 195 watt laser power and a scan speed of 500 mm per second, the porosity appears round and larger. And this is due to the keyhole mode that develops with high power parameters and the lower speeds. So these parameters should be avoided. Another reason for the occurrence of defects is the quality of powder feedstock. Basically, the quality of the material feedstock is responsible for two main defects that are the surface roughness and the spherical micropores due to the gas trapped in the raw powder particles. More in detail, powder particles are made with different techniques, as is shown here in this figure. For example, we can have gas atomization process or water atomization process and so on. And each of these processes produce powders with different shape and size. So the selection of the feedstock materials needs to consider quality, but also the cost of the process, considering also that the surface roughness can be reduced or elim eliminated with post-processing treatments, while the gas porosity is more difficult to eliminate. In AM materials, there are two types of pores, as is shown in these figures. So we can have keel pores and spherical pores. Spherical pores are also called metallurgical pores and they have regular shape and small size, generally less than 100 micrometers. Keel pores have a regular shape with a diameter size over 100 micrometers and spherical pores are due to the pores existing inside the gas atomized powder particles or they may be related to the entrapped gas during the solidification. On the contrary, keel pores mainly occur when there is the keel mode or they may be related to the entrapment of gas bubbles between the layers. After the printing phase, it is important to find the amount of porosity in the component in order to predict the possible failures because every single pore may represent a zone of stress in intensification. The estimation of the amount of porosity can be made using the Archimedes method or we can use the tomographic analysis. Some authors found that the spherical pores are more responsible for a reduction in the truth cross section in the tensile specimens while the keel pores are more responsible for the stress concentrations. However, both defects contribute to lower the mechanical strength. Another type of defects in AM parts are the lack of fusion defects. They form when the energy density is not strong enough to melt the entire desired region, or when the scan speed is faster, because in this case the solidification rate is higher and the molten pool has no time to fill all the substrate. But there is another reason for lack of fusion occurring. If the melt spot is not big enough and there is no overlapping, lack of fusion defects form under the connecting point, as is shown in this figure. And when the laser power value increases, also the melt spot increases, and the average track size increases too. So overlapping is complete, resulting in a small number of lack of fusion defects. Here, in this figure, we can see that, according to some authors, lack of fusion defects act as starter notches that nucleate microcracks, and this nucleation can also coalesce into a growing crack, lowering the fatigue life. Here, in the figure, in the second figure, is shown the fracture surface where it is possible to see a tortuous path and an irregular fracture surface. This means that fatty cracks initiate is distant from the notch root and close to lack of fusion defects. Residual stresses are another type of defects. In AM processes, the high thermal gradient cannot be avoided completely, so residual stresses are generated 
because of localized heating and cooling. And they are highly dangerous because the elastic limit is lowered locally and failures are achieved early. In this first figure, some authors found that in as-built conditions where the residual stresses are high, the components show a low and an insufficient crack growth. This makes it know that heat treatment are necessary. And in this second case, after a 800 degree heat treatment, the crack growth is greater and the crack path is more linear. The roughness surface is one of the most important features in AM components. And it is also one of the most influential defects that can increase the local stress and affects the crack initiation behavior. The roughness surface is due to two different mechanisms. The first one is a problem of approximation, while the second one is due to the improper melting of powder particles and the bowling phenomenon. In these figures, is shown the process parameters effect on the surface quality. The laser power and the energy density in the two first figures reveals similar trends, while the hatch spacing and the scan speed show the opposite trend. In particular, an increasing of hatch spacing resulted in a rougher surface due to the decreasing overlap between the melted tracks. This is the same mechanism shown for the lack of fusion defects. However, roughness surface can be improved using post-processing treatments, and this leads to greater mechanical strength. In this figure, some authors investigated the surface quality effect on the high cycle fatigue. Obviously, the machine samples show a good fatigue strength compared to the S-built ones. But in this case, the best behavior is due to the hot rolled treatment, because in this case, also the microstructure is improved. The last type of defects presented in this work are the thermal microcracks. These defects are a direct consequence of the several residual thermal stresses induced from the fast cooling rate. The size of these microcracks depends on the thermal gradient between the deposited layers, and this, of course, depends on the process parameters. In particular, energy density does not affect that much the crack formation, while the scan speed is considered the leading parameter because it controls the rate of solidification. So, material properties of AM parts strongly depend on the past thermal and procedural history. All AM materials show typical defects that inevitably arise due to the not optimized process parameters. However, finding the optimal set is not easy, because all the parameters mutually influence each other and the degree of effect by each parameter is not well understood. Several others have found interesting results, providing an optimal set of parameters for their individual case. But the single setting cannot be applied to all materials and in all condi conditions, because there are many variables involved that change the printing conditions. However, studying how defects occur during the printing phase is important to understand which parameters are the most influencing in order to find the optimal set so that defects are minimized and mechanical behavior improved. Thank you for the attention.